brought to you by The Sun. This video is sponsored by Cubico. Hello, Streeple people. It's been a while. I'm homeless now, and I live in the middle of nowhere. Actually, not technically homeless. That's my house. It's over there. I've moved into my, my tiny house now. So if you've seen part one, it wasn't quite finished. It's now a few months later. I procrastinated because I'm really bad at putting out videos, and I've had to do some other videos in the meantime. The house is complete as far as, you know, artistic projects go because art is never really done if you can consider this art. Let's do a quick walk around because I did film a lunch, but not enough. I just basically... to install wood flooring on the ceiling because of all the fasteners and the general awkwardness of it. But it's done. We can move on to the next step now. As you can see, I didn't really film too much because my craftsmanship is terrible and there's really nothing that I can do that other people can't do better than I can. So I'll let them be better than me and I will just be awful and just get my house done. Let's actually do a quick tiny house tour because this is actually going to be a house tour video. So I'm going to show you what I've done, what I think I want to do, how this is probably going to go this winter and Let's see where it ends up because this is a big experiment to me and I've just started living in it. So first, the foundation. Every tiny house needs a foundation of some sorts. Now, I've seen people buy cheap trailers and then build a tiny house on them and I'm so glad I didn't do that and I'm so glad I did a little bit of research because this thing weighs 12,000 pounds now. It's pretty excessive and it's very heavy. So I got a custom made trailer for this thing from people that actually built tiny house trailers so I feel very good about it. It is time for the first tow of the tiny house. I moved it a few times. I've actually taken up the flight test in the meantime for Flight Fest, and that was three hours of 50 mile an hour driving. I don't really feel like doing it again. Underneath this trailer is a steel frame. It's all steel studs rather than wooden studs because I can save up to about 40% weight. So that was a no brainer for doing that. It's also much more sturdy and durable. Underneath the steel construction is a bunch of rock wool insulation because it hurts pretty good and it's got a nice R value and it's more environmentally friendly than fiberglass. And it's less itchy, but just by a little bit. If you look at the windows, they are cheap windows. Unfortunately, because of current circumstances, you can't really even order custom windows unless you want to wait months out of the year, which I do not. I'm on a time schedule, so I had to get some cheap windows from Menards and slap them on this bad boy. And so far they're holding up okay, but you can tell they're cheap. The skylight, however, is amazing. I'm so glad I went with that choice. It's nothing like waking up in the morning and sun is heating up your face, so you have to get out of bed at a more reasonable time rather than sleeping until 1 a.m. like I normally do. As far as the porch goes, it's not really portable. There's actually a bunch of mosquitoes out here, so this is unbearable. The porch is just standard porch built materials. I might try to make something lighter that attaches to this thing when I really decide to move it because this is mostly gonna stay in Ohio or I'll just give it to someone because it's honestly pretty heavy and kind of hard to move. It's really neat being out in the middle of nowhere. You really get to test your battery powered equipment and this this thing was sent to me and it's, it's actually a lot of fun. I'm running this fan and I can use it to run my other tools and stuff when I'm working when I don't have access to the actual main batteries of my house. So that thing's neat too. My absolute favorite part of this entire thing, the solar panels. It's free electricity from the sun. These are secondhand solar panels that I bought them used for $45 a piece, but I had to get like a pallet load of them. So I have like 32 of these solar panels back at my shop. These are just eight and this totals to 2,080 watts of solar panels if they were all facing optimum conditions. I, being lazy and me, screwed them into these two by fours, but this is something so I can just get them working. I can kind of test them out and see if I like them or not. And I definitely like them. So in the future, I'm gonna build a trailer to hold these solar panels and build a tracker to track them so I can get maximum efficiency from the sun with these. Over here, we got the water situation. 30 gallon tank, stick a hose in it, and the water pump sucks it in. There's really not much more to explain there. Now this is great if you're in warmer climates. I'm going to be dealing with some issues in the winter here, so I might have to figure out something else. Probably external solar controller with a separate battery just to keep the water from freezing. But I'll probably think of something fancier. I'm really not quite sure what I'm gonna do. God, these mosquitoes are awful. Waste water. I only have great water, so I don't deal with any sort of sewage. But uh, that goes into a tank, which is not here because I've just drained it. It's over somewhere over there, so we're not gonna worry about that right now. No sewage, because sewage is awful. So that's it for the outside. Let's go inside and check out what's in there. OK, 
Okay, time for the inside portion of the house. It is not dark outside because it looks much cooler with the lights on. The living room. This is the living room. It's actually pretty spacious as far as tiny houses goes. I really did kind of finish it up with a lot of overhead space for playing VR so I don't smash into my ceiling if I had another loft. Plus I wanted to keep the center of gravity low in the tiny house to make it easier to transport so it doesn't want to flip over as much in high winds. So over here we have the gaming setup. I just ripped this out of my house and put it in here. It's a big gaming setup. We got this big Samsung 2 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitor stitched together. It's the old um, 1080 version. It's for editing my videos. That's what I told myself when I purchased it. Gaming PC. This is where I put my graphics card, my 3090, if I had one. Over here we have a 75 inch TV because people like to live very minimalistic in tiny houses. I said, screw that. 75 inch giant TV, here we go. It's really nice thing on the sofa, just chilling with my dog and watching TV. It's great, it's kind of like a mini movie theater. I don't really want to do much else inside a tiny house except watch TV and play video games and sleep, obviously. Is this an ad? So over here I have my wooden shelf. I actually haven't really stocked this too many things because I just moved in like two weeks ago and I've just been really lazy and not really gone to the decorating part of the tiny house life yet. I'm just still living in it, kind of exploring. And over here we have an Ikea sofa. <laughs> what can I say? It's an Ikea sofa. It's lightweight. You put it together. It's pretty small. And this is the one time I can vouch for Ikea crap. It's small and it fits pretty well inside the tiny house. Oh, you must be wondering what this rope for. Use it to get up here so I can grab things off the shelf. And I can take them down. <laughs> it's a little awkward, but hey, it's more convenient than having to sh get a ladder from somewhere and bring it in here to put stuff up on the shelf. There's different hook spots in the ceiling, so I'll just move it around to do that. We'll see how long it lasts before I end up falling off the ceiling, but that'll be fun and I'll update you later next year if I rip the ceiling out. And over here we have my lovely mini split. Oh wait, it's not a mini split. It's your garbage run the mill window AC unit with a compressor on the outside. The reason why I went with this it's cheap, it's easy to replace, and it's also very easy to take off for maintenance, so I'm not having to work in some awkward position. And it actually works really well for cooling such a small space because, well, it's only like 200 something square feet. So that's my living room. Let's go check out the kitchen. You can see my lovely wooden stove. Haven't got to play with that yet. I will let you know how that goes next year in the update video of the tiny house living. But other than that, it's pretty cool. I'm really for looking forward to colder season and playing with this. Hopefully I'll set my house on fire, but that's why the fire extinguisher is right over there. As you can see up there too, that's the, the first scene I put in the house from one of the adventures I went on. That is a broken propeller because I was learning to fly paramotors and I sat down while taking off. So I exploded a prop. <laughs> that's a $350 trophy right there. Over here we have the kind of bar dining area. I, I don't really know what you would call this. I just like it because it opens up. And when I get a more permanent area, I can put another small table out there and you can kind of like push things through to someone sitting out there if I ever have friends or company, but that's another story. And under here, I have a piano. I still like to kind of mess around with piano. I'm very not musically talented. I wish I could trade some of my other talents to be able to play this better. And it's really cool because it just slides in and out when I want to use it, and it's out of the way. Because in a tiny house, you really have to maximize the most space you have because it, everything used to perform double duty, so a piano would be useless if it sat here, so it's also a table and the piano. As far as Food storage goes, average refrigerator. There's really nothing exciting to say about this. It's just a small 4.4 cubic foot refrigerator. You got refrigeration and you got freezeration up here. Uh, what do you want me to say? It's a refrigerator. <laughs> On to the next thing. This down here is a combination washer dryer. Ooh, have you ever seen one of these? But it's really neat and I've had pretty good success with it. I like it. It's a good waste of money. It's so nice being able to come home after being dirty, messing around in a workshop, just taking off my clothes, throwing them in here, taking a shower and just hit and start when you're done. It's very efficient. That's the nice thing about living in a tiny house. It's a very efficient lifestyle. I walk in the door, five steps here, close off, one step into the shower, undirty. It's great. Oh, you can also take your dump too. So let's go to the toilet next. So over here is a nature's head composting toilet. Yeah, you just crap in a bucket, you stir it with this thing right here, and then your crap kind of disappears under a bunch of composting stuff. It doesn't stink, it doesn't smell at all, and it's really just like using a normal toilet. It's a lot less hassle than doing with a toilet and a toilet clog, and you don't really clog a composting toilet unless you're really bad. Now, I wouldn't want to puke in it. I don't want to do that. Over here we have clothing that just kind of goes in there. I'm very simplistic. You know I just wear a white shirt and then sometimes a button up and that goes there. The bathroom, it looks pretty bad. I'm not happy. If some of you are interior designers and have better ideas on what I should do in the bathroom, I'll probably plan on remodeling maybe sometime next spring or summer because I'm already not happy with it. But I'm still learning how everything kind of works. It still functions just fine and it's not really, you know, falling apart. It just doesn't look good, so. I'll do some of that later. As far as the shower goes, it's fiberglass, three-piece shower, 36 by 36. Plenty big enough for me. I'm a small guy. I don't really take up that much space. 
So that, nothing really right home about there. It works nice. I also added a little bit of a faucet here that is in line with the shower. I can wash my hands here. So that's the bathroom. Pocket door. You can see I haven't even painted this yet or done anything with it. Let's go to the kitchen. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So we have some stone uh, backsplash here. This is some kind of like lightweight air stone they, they sold. It's still kind of heavy. I really did have to kind of sacrifice on what I wanted to do with some of this hanging out stuff. I would like a nice granite countertop, but granite is very heavy and I do not need the weight in here. So I try to purposely choose like plywood and stuff for most of the substrate that goes in the back. So it's not drywall. There's no drywall in here at all. Cause I had to be careful as far as weight goes and moving around and cracking if I wanted to take this thing on a long trip. Over here we have a microwave slash air fryer, which is pretty cool. I'll let you know how that goes later. Over here we have the kitchen sink. And I have an RO system for drinking water. So I have nice clean water no matter where I'm at. Thank you, Nigel. I've constantly been using this Nigel Red. No, not, it's I've Niall Red. His real name is Nigel, did you know that? It's very confusing. Thank you, Nigel. And over here is just a standard cabinet I got from Lowe's. It's really nothing special. I just stained this and decided to paint this. What do you want? <laughs> I, I don't do construction. I just, I bought something I put in here because it's fast and efficient. Over here, I haven't really even finished the ceiling yet. You can kind of see stuff that's really still going on. Yeah, I'm still figuring out what I want to do there. I have some 12 volt lighting here that turns on. Then I have the kitchen lights that turn on over here. I have this copper ceiling tile. This stuff's very expensive, but since I have such a small amount, it doesn't really cost me a whole lot. Plus, if my cooking experiments go crazy and set the ceiling on fire, well, see, look, it's, it's kind of fireproof. And over here, we have the six gallon water here. It's 120 volts. It has a 1,500 watt element. It takes five minutes to make, take a lukewarm shower, a 10 minutes to take a hot shower, and 15 minutes to take a really hot shower. I think it's pretty good. I just turn it on and off when I want to use it to save battery because I haven't completely running off of batteries at this time. So now it's time to go upstairs. But about the stairs, this is actually storage. I just can take these out and there's a bunch of hardware in there. This one, more stuff, more tools. And uh, let's go upstairs. Over here, we're upstairs. I have this, uh, this is actually aircraft cable and this is, these are aircraft turnbuckles. So this is cool. I just kind of put this up here as some sort of defense to keep the dog from rolling out and falling onto the floor, which wouldn't be very pleasant to hear in the morning. Now, this is the unique feature of my tiny house. I've seen some built like this, and I really wanted to take this experience because I don't want to crawl around to get into bed. I can just literally hunch over a little bit because this is like four foot, six inches. So it doesn't work for standing up completely, but you don't have to crawl on your knees to get into bed. So I walk through here, timer sleeps, and then you go to bed. It's very, very convenient for getting in and out of bed in the morning and at night. So over here, a little bit more storage for some clothes that I have yet to put in the house or whatever I decide to store here as far as like extra bed sheets or towels. This is a queen size mattress. It fits pretty good. There's still a little more space here. I probably could have gone with the king, something a little bit bigger, but it's kind of nice just to be able to kind of sit down here as well. So I have this ledge for doing other stuff, like other stuff. Over here too, I have these cool dimming lights. Check this out. Ooh. I put dimmers on mostly everything. It's very cool. Oh, and this is really cool too. Check this out. It's a very unique experience sleeping like this, especially when there's like thunderstorms and stuff. Cause you look up and like lightning is coming down and you're like, I probably shouldn't be as close to the skylight. So during thunderstorms, I kind of go down there. Eventually I'm going to build like a metal shield that can uh, actuate and go up and down. So I don't have to look at the lightning and get struck by lightning while I'm trying to sleep. But I really do love having the sunroof up here. Cause if you look up at the stars and then you go to sleep. All right. So that pretty much concludes most of the very standard like tiny house stuff not very unique but let's go check out my favorite part the power system probably the most entertaining or fascinating thing in this entire video because the rest of it's very boring house stuff coming from outside we have my solar panels i have this pvra switch because sometimes there's a big thunderstorm so i'd come here turn them off disconnect them so i don't have to deal with the lightning frying stuff although there's still an air gap in here it could probably fry stuff so i just do this now it's completely disconnected and I can undo the other one too. So going from that, we have the solar charge controller. It does a pretty good job. It takes this energy from the PV array and puts it into the batteries and just carefully monitors how much it goes. So coming down from that, they go to the batteries. These are the Battleborn 100 amp hour, 24 volt batteries. I have six of them that run the entire house. They do an amazing job of keeping me sufficient with power because I've been playing video games for a couple of weeks now here and watching TV and doing all that stuff. And they haven't missed a beat just yet. The best thing about these is these are also assembled and made in the U.S. So that's awesome because American companies are better, especially right now. So huge thank you to Battleborn for helping me out with the batteries. Love these things. I've actually watched a few teardowns and I'm very impressed with what I see inside of them with what little I know about batteries. These uh, LAFE PO4 batteries are extremely safe chemistry. 
unlike the lithium polymer batteries I use in my airplanes, which, you know, if you smack them, they explode. I do not want my house with explosive batteries. I haven't heard do all my research of anything bad happening with these, so I'm very happy to have these in my house. Coming from that, we go back up to this little combiner box, and that goes to my switch that turns off the power. I'm not going to turn off the power because everything is currently powered on, but I have two switches so I can completely isolate the inverter from the batteries. So I have the positive one and the negative one. The negative one has a 200 amp breaker because the wires are still not appropriately sized for this Ames Power 6,000 watt inverter. That thing could pull some serious amps at 24 volts and I would need to upgrade the wires before I you know, was capable of doing that. So that'll be something in the future, but right now I actually am very conservative with how I use electricity. Like if I want to use the microwave, I don't use the water here in the AC. I pick between those two things to not try to blow a breaker or pull too many amps because at night is when I come home and at night I don't want to use too much current because I can't really charge the batteries because you know there's no sun outside we have to kind of live carefully when we're running off of solar energy the inverter basically takes the 24 volts and steps it up to 240 volts which goes into my house which is a split panel system so that's basically 110 volts 110 volts on the other side and you know uh, fancy like electric stuff don't take my advice I'm learning still about electricity but it's fired up and I've had a professional come and take a look at this thing to make sure it's not going to combust or shock me. If you notice this little cluster over here this is actually a sub 12 volt system that comes directly off of the batteries. This thing goes into a little step down thing which takes a 20 volt steps it down to 12 and feeds the wall lights, the inverter fan, the kitchen lights, and the water pump. One on truly off grid. So because this stuff is flammable and can potentially burn I have these fireballs not actual flaming fireballs but these balls if you light them on fire they explode and shoot chemical fire retardant everywhere so it's yeah it's it's a mess but i kind of like looking at it projects like this there's tons of things you have to do and problems you have to solve there's an infinite amount of ways to skin this cat so it's really important for me to have like a solid foundation before i start these things and that's why i'm really happy to say kibiko is a sponsor for this video Kibiko has tons of crates tailored to all ages and all interests. I would have loved to have these crates as a kid because these things are really designed to facilitate learning and exploration. Basically everything that I need to finish this house. Kibiko makes these amazing crates tailored around science, technology, engineering, arts, and the maths, otherwise known as STEAM. I love these kits from Kibiko because everything you needed is in the crate, including extras. Once you complete your projects, they even have supplemental information in the books to modify your project and to learn even more. The neat thing about the Kibiko crates is they're designed to facilitate a growth and knowledge so you kind of have an advanced tool bag of certain concepts that can help carry you over to the next projects that get even more complex in the future. Once again, like my tiny house. Check out Kibiko, they have crates for all ages and cover all the topics in Steam. Give the gift of learning and DIY fun by going to kibiko.com slash peterstreetpool and get 50% off your first crate today. So earlier today, I made a quick Instagram post saying, ask me anything on the tiny house. You should go follow me there because I randomly post BS that I'm generally doing on Instagram. This is the only social media platform I'm actually sort of active on. So check me out there. I did an AMA. So let's go down to the questions. Richard D. Billy asks, will it fly? Well, maybe if I push it off a cliff, it might fly momentarily. Lick my program says, how will it handle winter? I don't quite know yet. Teddy Coughlin asks, calculated R value. I'm really not quite sure. Rockwell has pretty good R value, but I got these really crap windows that will probably reduce a lot of that. So hopefully the sunlight warms the tiny house and keeps it nice in the winter. Jonah Easter asks, any plans to add a cool security system? Flamethrowers or something? <laughs> well, would it be a cool security system? I told you how it worked. Now would it? Among the Dankus asks, can it withstand high winds? A tornado? Probably not. You I mean, typically you don't want to be in an RV during a tornado, but I do plan on adding anchor points to the outside so I can actually just strap it down using uh, tie downs and make put guy wires on it to really lock it down to keep it from moving because I do anticipate storms in the near future. Simon Vance asks, will you have to purchase land to put it on? I don't really need to purchase the land. It definitely helps. I am kind of looking for land down in Florida eventually because I do want to move to a more free state than Ohio. Ohio kind of sucks too because it's like northern Florida without the benefit of a nice ocean. So I might try to move to Florida sometime in the future. Right now I'm currently staying at my friend Dewey's who's letting me keep this thing out here for a little bit. But till then I'll see where the road takes me because this thing has wheels and I can move anywhere. Elijah Walker 864 asks, how easy is it to move? Well, if you got a big enough truck, it's pretty easy. It's not It's not too bad. Dave NCJR says, Do you think this could be a good alternative to an apartment? I actually lived in an apartment prior to this, and I like this a lot better because like, I just literally only like half used my apartment. I had a pretty decent sized apartment, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm just one guy, so this is actually suits my needs a lot easier, and plus this is mine. I own this. I can move it wherever. Marie says, Why is it called a tiny house and not a one percenter caravan? 
I don't really quite get the question. Like, 1% is like a rich people thing, isn't it? I probably spent close to about 30k on this, so it is kind of up there, but it's cheaper than a house, that's for sure. Oh, Buckingham asks, where do you poop? Major said composting to it, or you should do that. It's pretty cool. Jacob Bartel says, where stinky poopy go? Again, in the bucket. Weed Hooper says, can you attach the deck slash shoulder to it when you have to move it? And have you signed up for Starlake yet? to be fully mobile wireless. The deck and stuff, I didn't really plan on moving very well. I might have to leave that depending on where I go and just build a new one at the different location. Second thing with the Starlink, Starlink is actually geo-locked to your location. I actually didn't know this, so you can't just strap it to your car and drive around with it because it's just geo-fenced into where your current position is. I don't know why Starlink does that, but hey, I'm not Elon Musk. I am some more states, not a question, but a statement. People brag about how they managed to build their tiny house for a few 10Ks. They all failed to mention that they live on their parents slash family land, which has a proper house on it, hooked up to their utilities, using it as their address. This whole tiny house fad is BS. It's not entirely wrong, but I am kind of like making this as my apocalypse cabin where I can drag into the woods, which is why specifically we have these solar setups the way I have it and the water tank setup so I can kind of use it. Still, I am sort of reliant on the grid as far as water goes right now. So he's not totally wrong. And generally most people that build these things have sort of issues like that where you're actually on land that you already own and it's like, mm. Is it really worth it? Is it kind of a fad? So maybe yes, I actually sort of agree with this statement. A few more questions. Sipa still asks, how about legal slash zoning issues? Did you have any issues finding a place to put it? Any hoops to jump through? How is it viewed by planning slash zoning boards? Is it a temporary structure limited in how long it could be in one place or is it a permanent dwelling? Typically why it's put on wheels is to circumvent a lot of zoning slash code laws. I did spend most of my time trying to like research those things and build it up to code in case anything in the future were to happen where you can legally live in a tiny house. But for now it's mostly in a gray area of it's an RV. Um, that's why I'm kind of looking at Florida too because Florida is more friendly to tiny houses. So I might be looking to put this somewhere down there living in this thing through like half the seat. Jesse Koss asks, high voltage versus low voltage conversion. Is it better to run more DC than convert to AC for use? And technically it's always better to not go through the its conversions as much as possible. It's, just, it's better to use a straight current from what it is. Like DC would be slightly more efficient, but it's hard to find DC units as far as like AC, refrigeration and all that. It's not really built that way. So I do have to go through the AC to step it up, but the losses are probably less than like 5% I imagine. So it, it's more of a cost thing at that point. It's better just to get the average stuff you can buy anywhere. So that's why I try and have the house running on mostly AC rather than DC. Only DC does is run some 12 volt LEDs because that stuff's cheap and I can mess with that all day. Last question. Anthony K. Velas says, who's also an awesome paramotor pilot by the way, totally into paramotors right now flying that. It's nice to actually be out here in this field I can fly a paramotor whenever. Anyways, he asks, what is the process like to get approval for this residential structure on your property? What sort of challenges could others anticipate trying to get into a tiny home of their own? Like I said, you gotta look at what your local jurisdiction does. Certain states are more friendly to this. Certain states are not as friendly to this. Ohio is sort of like a not really friendly for tiny houses. So that's why I'm also, like I said, looking to Florida. That's all I have for you guys in this video. I'm going to have to like live in this thing and really give you an update a year from now how I really feel about living in this. So far it's been great. I've been in here for about three weeks now. Not that much time, but for the most part, I really enjoy it because I just like walk in. I put my stuff on the counter. I don't lose my stuff because my brain isn't working very well. So I have a rack for my keys. I put it all in one spot. It's a very small house. It's, it's impossible to really lose things. I eat my stuff. I take a dump of my toilet. I shower. I play piano. I play video games. I watch TV and I restart the day. Just like you should. So go ahead and go to bed. <laughs> Stop watching this video.